we're going to be doing ESD basics. And um, the uh, ESD control training, to me, is one of the most important things that a company can do. The buying of tools, work surfaces, wrist straps, coil cords, smocks, all this good stuff, that's nice. But to me, it's not complete until you've had the training. And when a company is really committed to worrying about their quality, recognizing ESD as a part, as a function of your quality program, they hold a training session. Because to me, a trained person can do a lot better with the tools that are given than a person who's untrained. Okay? So to me, training is extremely important. There's a document that was done uh, called S2020. Uh, it was republished in 2007. This was prior to, if you go back into the 70s and 80s and 90s, documents that almost everybody followed were military documents. Military were the only ones that had the documents that were recognized by multiple different companies. Otherwise, every company was kind of like doing their own thing. I got a good quality program. Yeah, trust me. Okay? So the government in around 1993, somewhere around in that area, I think Clinton was in, they decided they wanted to get out of the document publishing business. So the government came to the ESD Association and said, can you write a commercial item description of 1686 and DOD 263, which was the what thou shalt must do to be a military subcontractor handling electronics, and then it's accompanying 263 handbook. We said, sure. So we worked on it in 1999. The ESD Association published S2020, which was the commercial item description as to how to do ESD control. In 1993, DOD adopted this document uh, within their system. DOD doesn't move real quick, so it took them a couple of years. In 2007, the document was updated, and it'll probably be updated again around 2011 to 2012. About every five years, the document will be updated. Uh, so this is the standard that we, that we tend to follow. Um, it does give a lot of flexibility. It doesn't tell you exactly it gives, you some, it gives the company some broad guidelines. One of those broad guidelines is, thou shalt have a training plan. We fulfilled that for one year now. Um, and there's a lot of other you know, directions, but the individual specific things that a company does okay, is pretty much up to the company. The document just turns around and gives them guidance on some things that they must do. There's a written ESD control plan. That is something that is required by the 2020 document. Your company has a written ESD control pro program. The uh, 2020 program is written around a 100-volt sensitive device. That will become much more meaningful to you in a short period of time. Um, and then a little more stuff about, about training that is required. Okay, also want to mention to you, Safety is the very first concern. If there becomes a conflict between operator safety and ESD reliability of a part, your safety takes precedence. So we hold you in higher esteem than the components that you're handling. Okay, so safety is never compromised for the quality of the reliability of the parts. That's something that's very important. It's written into 2020. It was written into the military standards, and we all tend to turn around and to follow those. Okay, uh, static. Static is an electric charge at rest. I'm sure all of you have experienced static one time or another, especially if you've been married. Okay, when two surfaces are in contact and they separate, you are always going to develop a static, static charge. That can be a person walking on a floor, that can be you sliding your derriere out of your car seat, um, unrolling tape, picking up plastic, Whenever two surfaces come in contact and then separate, there is some degree of static charge that's generated. Um, basically, some of the atoms stick with one material, some stay with the other material, and the charge is always opposite. So anyway, if we take this tape and if we pull it out, we have a positive or negative charge? Positive. Okay, and if we come over here to the body of the tape, Negative. Negative. Okay. 
So anytime that you separate two surfaces, one becomes positive, one becomes negative. Where's my little device? Okay? Both positive and negative charges can cause a problem in your electronic devices. Okay? Doesn't really matter whether it's positive or negative, it has to do with the differential. Um, the, if you're coming up to, in fact, if I'm charged 1,000 volts positive, and if he's charged 1,000 volts negative, for whatever reason, he's kind of a negative personality That's guy, true. the difference between us is 2,000 volts. That's the same as one of us being charged 2,000 and the other one being zero. So it's the differential between those two. Okay, so whenever you have dissimilar metals, um, or dissimilar materials, you're going to get a charge. Could be plastic on plastic, could be plastic on metal. Okay? Um, walking on carpet, sliding against a car seat. Plastics tend, not always, but they tend to have a positive charge. But we just saw on that plastic tape, we could have both positive and negative. Okay? So it tends. Um, as I said, one surface becomes positive, one surface becomes negative. Now, the size of the charge, it varies. Here's a little thing for you. Here's, this is a test. During the summer, it's humid. Do you ever get a shock on your doorknob as you slide out of your car? January, February. Do you ever get a shock when you slide out of your seat? Okay. Okay, so here's the first hint. Humidity. Humidity plays a big role in the amount of static charge that's generated. The lower the relative humidity, the higher the charge generation. Okay? So when you need ESD the most, going into the winter months, during the summer months, do you have to, you know, well, we don't need ESD? No, that's when you practice your ESD craft to get really, really good at it, when you need it really, really a lot during the dead of winter. Okay? The other thing is, forget that. Anyway, the other thing is, is the, what are the materials? Okay, if somebody is wearing um, rubber sole shoes versus leather sole shoes, they're walking on a carpet, they may charge differently. The other one is the degree of friction. The higher the friction, remember when you were a little kid, you're going to sneak up behind your brother or your sister and you're going to touch them on the ear? You didn't sit there and just... You got your foot going hard. That's the friction, okay? The more friction there is, the larger the charge. Demonstration time. If I take and if I... Is there a charge on this? Small final. Small, okay. If I take it and if I rub it lightly. The small negative charge. Sorry. Larger charge, okay. Friction. Plays a big, play, plays a big part. Of it. Materials, relative humidity, friction, which goes back to what your mama told you when you were a little kid: don't shuffle your feet, pick up your feet when you walk. You'll generate less charge.